Hi guys, so today I'll be reviewing the Giz Audio into Binary show plan. This is the collab between Timmy from Giz Audio and Binary. Binary is a very unknown company, but this is the first launch outside their home market. They decided the first IM would be a collab. Honestly, that could be a quite a good idea. So let's find out about, about this IM more. So before I start the review, I would like to say a big thanks to HiFiGo for sending me this loaner unit. After the review, this goes back to them. HiFiGo.com could be a one-stop hub for most of the desktop amps, DACs and any IMs of your choice. They have everything you need for building your audiophile journey or for most of the seasoned audiophile out there at every range. A big thanks to them and please check them out uh, in the unaffiliated links given below the like button. But rest be assured all the thoughts and opinions are about to hear are my own. Uh, they had no input for this review nor are they having a copy of approval for this review. So before talking about the sound, let's talk about the accessories, build quality and comfort. The case provided is very good and sturdy but impractical for everyday use. Although good for protecting the IEM if you keep it in a bag. Uh, lack of tips at this price range. Pre-order does get the Divinus Velvet tips. After, the no after that, the normal user gets the softer UC tips. Uh, would have been nice if there were at least foam tips in included with this IEM at this price range. Uh, no modular cable at this price point. I expect a modular cable at this price point. Uh, the cable does, does also have a chin cinch. Uh, the IEM is very sturdily built and the weird shape is very actually comfortable uh, on my ear. Uh, the overall shell is uh, quite small and very lightweight, so it is very comfortable. The nozzle although quite deep, but the diameter is small and hence okay for people with uh, smaller ears. The Chopin has 4 drivers, 8mm ceramic diaphragm DD for the base, a custom tailored PA for the mid range, a pair of customized PA drivers which is for the treble frequencies. They are held together by a dedicated 3 frequency RC filter band. Let's talk about the sound signature. I have used the stock tips over here and the Moondrop Chew 2 cable as the cable which I had gotten had a 4.4mm termination cable and I didn't have a 4.4mm source as of now. Uh, I use a Fio BTR5 for my source which is a very neutral source. Uh, these are not hard to drive but nor are they easy to drive. A decent dongle would be needed for its full potential to shine. Uh, the overall sound signature for this IM is U-shape I would say and it is very over uh, neutral tone. It has a very neutral tone and a timbre. Uh, there is a slight BA timbre which I have noticed. So let's talk about the bass. It has a slight mid bass stuck and the sub bass is a bit more prominent. I personally found that the sub bass to be quite good and it has that rumble and kick. Uh, due to the mid bass stuck, the overall bass region lacks a bit of a punch and oomph when I need it. But this smooth mid bass has an advantage. Wear it, it doesn't bleed into the mids and it doesn't mess up the mids that much. For me personally, I would like a bit of a mid bass but for those, those who don't, this is a very good match. The mid range is recessed but the because the mid range is uh, mid bass is recessed it does come forward instrument sounds very good in this and i could pick out all the instruments played in a song and enjoy them to the fullest for example playing galactic funk by cassiopeia was a treat to listen time is very good for classical music i was very happy while listening to classical music from vivaldi chopin edward Reich, beethoven mozart etc the male vocals give me the depthness and grace texture of chris connell's and bill withers voice uh, but sometimes in certain songs, it does feel like the vocals are set behind and I don't enjoy it to the fullest. Uh, so that was a bit of a con I found over here. Uh, I do like my female vocals to be very forward, shimmery, but this doesn't do that. Uh, now for some, this could be a very good thing as many people are not so tuned with that super upper forward upper mids uh, and they love a laid back listen. Uh, for example, when I'm listening to Ano Yumini by Hako Yamaski, her super voice was really wasn't captured quite well over here and it let me longing for more. Uh, depending on the type of female vocals, uh, you like this could be purely down to a personal choice. The treble is very smooth and dark. Uh, the treble overall isn't that shimmery and lacks the spiciness. I generally want that and it is a good thing for many out there who are affected by the spicy or shimmery treble. Uh, I personally would have liked a bit more uh, here as many instruments sound a bit laid back in this region and sounded a bit uh, dampened. Again, depending on the type of treble you want, this could be a very bit, uh, good thing uh, as many out there prefer this darker shade of treble. The treble isn't that airy and there is a bit of uh, lack of treble extension. A bit of treble extension in my opinion would have helped it a lot. Technicalities. Uh, these are very good when it comes to this. The overall resolution was quite good, although not as good as a planar IM. Uh, although in some very hard to play songs when a lot of is happening, it felt a bit too much and it felt a bit lost. Again, this could be a net fit for this $200 price range, but it does deserve the mention. Uh, talking about the sound stage, the sound stage is quite okay. Although it has a good high end sound stage, the depthness and the overall width was quite lacking. Again, this is a purely matter of choice as many prefer this uh, intimate sound stage when wearing an IM. I personally prefer a wide sound stage. The imaging is very good for this price range. It was great for listening to live songs and also watching any media like action movies etc. It was really engaging. 
for gaming test uh, for gaming i would say these perform really good as a darker travel and the great imaging plays a big hand in its awesome gaming chops uh, when playing fps games i was very happy with the footsteps and having an idea of the surroundings uh, also in uh, busy sequences it didn't feel psc and was great in handling those uh, pairing it with a boom mic cable like from the canera celeste y1 pro which i did a review of uh, it makes a great gaming im in my opinion so talking about the comparisons and uh, recommending this item. So first comparison. With Truthy and Nova, I personally prefer the Nova because of its female vocals. But in a perfect world, I would generally have this Chopin and also the for classical music and also the uh, and also as a gaming item and also the uh, Truthy and Nova. Uh, in terms of Kara, the Kara has better female vocals, but the overall bass in Kara leaves a lot to be desired when compared to the Chopin. So I probably would choose Chopin over Kara, but then again, Kara also has a very good female vocals. Overall, the Chopin does certain uh, genre like classical and rock very well for me, but the dark uh, female vocals and treble leaves a lot to be desired for me. Now again, this could be the only IM for those who likes an uh, overall darker signature in terms of upper mids and treble, then this is the only IM you would ever need. Uh, so please do keep the negatives and positives in mind when making a choice, as no IM is uh, one choice fits for all. Overall, I do feel this is a good IM for some people, not so good for people like me who does like a forward female vocals. If you have any comments, you can ask me in the comment section below uh, and please do like the video and subscribe to my channel if possible. Uh, subscribing and liking does help me make more content like this and I would really appreciate if you could do. It's free of charge and uh, it really helps me out. So yeah, I hope this review was uh, okay and if you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section below and I hope you have a great day. Bye.